Yo, right there, everyone, this is Cobb, and this is going to be a Sooner Than Planned Sunday's episode. And this is, of course, because there was no Q&A in the last episode, which was focused a lot around Warlords of Draenor updates. So this video is to catch up with that Q&A. Now, there is going to be another video out today covering a few more changes in a recent Blizzard post about Warlords. Make sure to drop by on that video, too. Let me know what you think, and we can talk in the comments there. But this video is going to be the Q&A of Destiny. I've got a ton of really good questions, a lot of questions that made me think. And um, so without further delay, let's just get right into them. Ashley Chadborn asks, if you could ask the viewers one question, what would it be? And it can't be, what questions do you have for a Q&A? And I'd actually like to ask, what do you guys really like about the channel? And this isn't a question that sprang to mind. I did have to think this one through quite a bit. And I guess that's because I just look at how many of us are here now, over 54,000 people, and I realize that we are actually a pretty big community here on YouTube. And I mean, there will always be some World of Warcraft giants around, and um, this definitely isn't the biggest channel out there, but more people have jumped on this than I could have ever imagined would. It makes me think that I must be doing something right, but if I'm really honest, I'm not 100% sure what that is. So is it the guide videos that you like, the arenas? Maybe it's my ridiculously deep voice that you just can't get enough of, I don't know. So let me know down below, it would be really, really interesting to just run through the comments and yeah, see what you guys have to say about that. I am almost definitely pronouncing this name wrong, but Edvis Sealich, I think, um, asks, if I could describe myself with one word, what would it be? I'd have to say committed. Everything I do, I feel like I have to push it to a limit. Um, I have to be the best, kind of. Uh, which might sound kind of bad, as well as not always being possible. It might have something to do with my siblings, though. Um, I have an older sister and a younger brother, and they both game as well. I would always make sure I was better at the games I played than the two of them. I was always very, very silently competitive. And it doesn't just apply to gaming either, I really like writing in my spare time and that is something I'm immensely committed to and I wish I had more time to put towards. And it gets to the point where I'll be awake writing all night till the sun comes up then I fall asleep and dream about the stories in my head. And so I feel like I do get intensely committed to things, um, to Sophie, to gaming and YouTubing and everything that I enjoy. Victor Ovlison asks, have you ever at any point in life thought about doing something else other than gaming and editing? If so, what? and why. Absolutely, and um, before gaming and YouTubing became a job, uh, I guess, I wanted to be a counsellor. I've always really, really liked talking to people and learning to understand them and doing my best to help them. I like listening to people's problems and then helping to fix them and being the one who gets them through the rough times. I guess I just like having that really positive impact. It happened a lot through college actually before I was with Sophie and people would come to me and vent, mostly girls. Some of them were just out for attention, some of them not, but regardless I would listen and I'd learn as much as I could and then I'd suggest anything I could to help and to seeing them cheer up and be happy and have a goal to work towards felt really good. Just picturing that person thinking back to the hard time they were going through and then thinking, you know, um, Tom helped me pass that, it just feels pretty awesome. So yep, in another life I definitely would have tried to be a counsellor I think. John Lindberger asks, what is your favourite book? And it would have to be the story in my head that I haven't even written yet. And that is only because I've invented every part of it exactly how I want it to be. It is tailored to fit what I want to see in a story in every way, um, literally. So even though I haven't written it yet, it is very real to me. But I do read a lot. And um, of any genre, really, I'm not picky, but I will sometimes avoid crime novels. I sometimes just get the impression that they are all basically the same story told a little bit differently and with different character names. If I had to pick out one book though, it would have to be the book I have that basically combines all of the works of Edgar Allan Poe. He writes a very gothic, almost demented styled horror. It is also very debatable that Edgar himself was quite insane and that almost adds for me um, a slightly unhinged undertone to a lot of his stories. Rebecca Haley asks, from what we've seen, what do you think of the level 100 warlock talents? I mostly think that they need some work. Um, chaotic resources for destruction makes our incinerate and conflagrate hit 75% less damage, but does make them generate 400% more embers, and this is listed as a passive effect, which makes me wary that it cannot be enabled or disabled at will. And if this is the case, it is a PvE talent. Having a lot of embers is nice, but in PvP, Destro cannot rely on spamming Chaos Bolts, I get the sense that you'll just end up ember tapping until you eventually die. Cataclysm sounds okay, it's a long range AoE with a 2.5 second cast time, it deals damage and applies either corruption 
or immolate to all targets hit and this is extremely situational. It could be good for immolating a hunter stampede for a lot of embers, it will be good in raided battlegrounds. But for arenas and most smaller scale fights I just can't see this ability being of much practical use. And Demonic Servitude allows you to permanently control our Doomguard and Infernal pets. Now unless Doomguards and Infernals are going to be given one or two more utility abilities like slows or knockbacks this talent is at risk of being another PvE talent but I will say that the Infernal pet does have a lot of constantly ticking AoE damage so it could be good in BGs and rated BGs. Overall I would like to see chaotic resources scrapped, I'd like to see more damaging and offensive talents put in its place. Cataclysm probably could be okay and um, Demonic Servitude I am pretty excited for with the hope that they do beef up Infernal Pets and Doom Guards so they are no longer just DPS spamming pets. Andreas Freaky asks what do you think about the CC nerf in Warlords of Draenor and I think that it has been a long time coming and I'm very very happy that it is on its way. Being spammed with instant CC in arenas is definitely no fun so it's good to see Blizzard fixing it. My only concern is that a lot more CC is going to be casted in Warlords so I'm hoping that melees have their interrupts torn down a little bit. A warrior with two charges, Stormbolt and a Pummel and even a Mass Sparrow Reflect if he goes with that could be a massive issue in Warlords if we are having to cast most of our CC abilities. But other than that worry, I do like the changes a lot. Matt Baker asks, what would be your reaction if they had taken out Chaos Bolt in Warlords of Draenor and what do you expect for the PvP in Warlords of Draenor? I actually wouldn't mind too much, Chaos Bolt is a pretty clunky spell and removing it would mean that we need another way to spend our embers offensively. So I would actually be quite interested to see what they could come up with to replace Chaos Bolt. And right now I'm not a big fan of the ability, it is very very hard to get off and doesn't really do the damage to justify the effort. And for PvP in Warlords of Draenor, more and more updates are coming out each day, so I have to go off of what Blizzard has been telling us. There's going to be a lot less CC, less instant CC in particular, it's going to be lower burst damage, and to compensate for these things, a lot of healing spells that were instant now have a cast time. So things are going to be harder in some ways and easier in others, but all in all, the updates Blizzard have posted over the past couple of weeks have me very, very excited for Warlords of Draenor. And finally, XD Glomb asks, do you think the world is not fair, that they are liars? Especially in the media, what do you think about the wars in the world that we actually have? To answer the first question, no, the world, planet Earth, our existence in general, is not fair right from the very get-go. We do not ask to be here. We simply spring into existence without choosing when or where. Then we have to do our best with what we have. Some people are born into millionaire families, never have to work a day in their life while attaining every material possession they could ever wish for. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, some people are born with nothing and every day could literally be their last. Horrible things can happen to very honest and very moral people that definitely don't deserve it. Um, the mistake a lot of people make though is thinking that we have a right to fairness when we don't. We are just animals on a rock gliding through the abyss of space. The laws of physics just do not account for fairness in the way a lot of us, myself included, wish that they would. With regards to lies in the media, that does get me a lot as well. Um, in my opinion, the media in general isn't much more than a cluster of mongoloids spreading exaggerated headlines and misquotes, in some cases even propaganda. Um, and I think that if I'd have anything to say on this, it's that the world does not owe any of us anything. Shit is going to happen and to good people and certain media outlets are just going to manipulate and lie, but for me, it is about what defines you. For me, it's about doing the best with what you have and helping other people to do the same, because unless you believe in reincarnation, you get one life on earth and you might as well do as much good for yourself and others as you possibly can and just have a positive impact. The world being quite an unfair to me, is encouragement to be there for people I care about and to focus on the good. And lastly, what do I think about wars? I'm not going to say a whole lot, but I will say that they, in general, breed needless discrimination, encourage racism, end in the loss of human life, they destroy families. And while it is very, very debatable that some ends justify the means, I just cannot accept that there is not a better way than just killing someone who disagrees with you or is preventing you from accessing something you want. Again, generally speaking, there will always be exceptions. Some things have to be fought for, but most things just do not have to be that way. In the real world, debates should be had, open and honest conversations. Basically, everyone just needs to chill the fuck out and stop killing one another. Now, a lot of people have been asking how me and Sophie met and how we got together and all of that, and I'm gonna quickly address that here. Um, I met Sophie in college, I knew her for about nine months, and we always got on really, really well. And she played World of Warcraft, which was obviously a plus. But when me and Sophie were getting together, it was a very, very rough time for both of us, but more so for Sophie. There was a lot of crap going on, so I'm really reluctant to revisit this in a video. There was a lot of hurt and sadness swirling around. Um, and to cut a long story short, we were basically there for one another. Um, I was around for her more so. She was in a worse place than me, and I was just in love with her. 
I did everything I could to try and see her happy again. I remember um, one night she was upset and I was still living at home with my parents and I just upped and left the house at midnight to walk the 40 minute walk to Sophie's place and it was fucking snowing, it was freezing, and but yes it was an insane time, the worst and best time of my life I think. I've never felt such intense feelings before, it was almost scary sometimes. But that is all I'm going to say about it for now, like I said it wasn't an easy time and there was a lot of hurt too for both of us and I know you guys will respect that, I don't really want to revisit that. So epic questions before I round off the video though, we do have a crazy donor and his name is Saad Ahmad, he donated 100 euros, now if this isn't crazy enough, he didn't even leave a note behind, he just went and did this like a silent hero. 100 euros is an absurdly big donation and it's actually the equivalent of watching one of my videos something like 60,000 times or something, so I hope that this puts things into perspective. It certainly does for me, so thank you man, I really can't say how much I appreciate the show of support to help me keep on doing what I'm doing here on YouTube. So that is all for this video, there will be another upload soon, I'm going to try and have it up today as well. Um, that video is going to cover the latest Warlords of Draenor changes for anyone who hasn't come across them or for anyone looking for somewhere to discuss them, share thoughts and ideas, I'm going to be reading through all of the comments and replying to the most interesting. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching guys, really really hope that you enjoyed this Q&A video if you did. Don't forget to like the video and show it to your friends, it would really really help me out to destroy everyone and we're going to catch all of you guys in the next video.